Hind students. Today we are going to start the last topic of first unit of subject telemetry principles and that is power line carrier communication PLCC. Basically in the previous lecture we understand about the various class uh, various type of telemetry systems, the definition of telemetry systems and the electrical and non electrical telemetry system classification. In today's lecture we are going to study about the very crucial example of this uh, electrical telemetry or we can say that also about this telemetry system classification related that is PLCC power line carrier communication. This power line carrier communication is basically directly related with the communication part which is going to be happen on the grid substation at the where the electricity transmission and distribution has been done. Actually when we are talking about the power line carrier communication that PLCC system basically using the high voltage transmission lines for connecting two substations for telecommunication purpose. As you all know that when the electricity is going to be transferred or distributed from one city to another city or from the gener uh, electricity generation unit to the various places of the countries, between them there a live or we can say that direct link of communication is required to send the commands and the signals related to the controlling of electricity signals. If we are using the basic telephone lines or some kind of that telecommunication purpose uh, other telecommunication lines for this process of communication or sending the data related to the transmission and distribution of electricity, there may be a chance of delay in the signals or uh, unnecessary congestion or due to the congestion in the traffic. So, basically when we are talking about this power line carrier communication, you can understand it, it uh, in a very simpler way that uh, we are using the same high tension line or high voltage transmission line for the communication purpose. For this uh, particular arrangement of PLCC, some specific kind of arrangement are going to be made on the both side of transmission and distribution centers or we can say that electricity electricity substations. So, basically it is used as a primary transmission service to transmit speech, telemetry and protection tripping commands as well as the low bit rate of RTU signals. So, basically this complete system is so economical and reliable for inter grid message transfer. So, with starting of this particular arrangement, as you know that uh, the high tension line is basically having the voltage range of kilo volts. Uh, so, but when we are talking about these signals of speed signals or the low uh, data rate signals, low bit data rate signals that basically signals are of very low voltage. So, in this particular arrangement actually we are using the same high tension line with some specific equipments for the voice and data signals. In this particular diagram you can easily see that this is your main power line, this is your main power line and here a LT part that is called as line trap. Basically that line trap is directly related uh, directly connected on the high tension line. On this high tension line actually 50 hertz signal is going on as the electricity signal as you all know that for the in, for in India for electricity electricity transmission the frequency range which is going to be used is 50 hertz. So, basically when we are talking about the voice, voice and data make signals that are having the radio frequency carrier of 40 to 500 kilohertz with a amplified level 
of 10 to 80 watt of radio frequency power RF power. And this particular voice and data mixed signal is injected into a high voltage power line using a suitable coupling capacitor. This is that part coupling capacitor. So, in this diagram you can easily understand that here this is a private automatic exchange that is PAX which is generating the voice signals. Here is a RTU basically that is uh, generating the uh, low bit uh, data rate signals. These both signals are going towards this PLCC terminal actually. That PLCC terminal is actually creating that signal which is going to be transferred on this high tension line through a coupling capacitor and that frequency range is around RF with a RF carrier of 40 to 500 kilohertz. So, this is about the basic arrangement of a power line carrier communication and you can easily see that here okay, that you are using the same high tension line HT line for communication purpose, communication purpose. So, now we are going to discuss all the points one by one such as line trap or coupling schemes or all of that. So, first of all this is the explained arrangement of the same PLCC terminal at the transmitter side. You can see this is the transmitter side. Here you can see that the main power or electricity which is going to be transferred from one, one substation to another is coming from here. This is a line trap. What is the use of line trap that is we are going to study in the next slide. Here we can see that a PLCC terminal is creating a signal which is going to feed in the this particular unit of coupling scheme. That basically coupling scheme is going to design uh, designed in such a way that it cannot give that particular signal to this particular transmission side. So, you can see that here with a coaxial cable this PLCC terminal is connected to the line matching unit and the coupling capacitor with this high tension line. The PLCC signal is actually routed to HV line through this coupling capacitor and line matching unit. Similarly, the PLCC signal is not absorbed by the substation by using this line trap. Actually, this line trap is, uh, is uh, actually uh, producing a one way, creating a one way in that one way only the high tension high voltage signal is coming in this line and this particular PLCC signal can be stopped by uh, to going in this particular area. So, this is about the basically coupling scheme then what are the basic components of this particular part. First of all is that is PLCC terminal and that particular PLCC terminal actually translate the voice and data into high frequency carrier that of 40 to 500 kilohertz. You here you can see that this particular this is the range 40 to 500 kilohertz. Now, second point is line matching unit. When we are talking about the line matching unit basically this line matching unit is required for the impedance matching purpose because you know that when you are going to transfer any particular power through a transmission line, then at the receiving side it is required a proper impedance matching is has to be done. If there is not proper impedance matching in that case there may be some reflected signals and that reflected signals will create some kind of disturbance or another uh, problems in the regular transmission. So, basically line matching unit is giving the impedance matching between the line and the coaxial cable that includes high voltage protection 
devices like drainage coil lightning arrester and earth switch these all are also the important part of this system and you, you can see that in the previous diagram this high tension line and here we are using a coaxial line so to match the impedance between these two lines this line matching unit is playing an important role now third one is coupling capacitor basically coupling capacitor couples high frequency carrier with power line and the typical value of this coupling capacitor is around 4000 to 10000 picofarad then the line trap basically line trap do not allow the transmitted high frequency carrier to enter inside the substation as you can see in this previous diagram here this is the line trap and this is stopping this particular uh, high frequency signal to enter in the substation side then with lt high frequency carrier get bypassed to some other line on the same bus bar and may leak to ground it means if any kind of uh, leakage type of structure is there if that uh, high frequency signal is going there then that is that signal is going to be in earth through this leakage bar bus then components after that line trap function in this particular diagram you can easily understand or study the uh, line trap functioning or the which is also known as plc signal blocking as you know that from this side we are getting a high frequency carrier signal and the main function of this line trap is to stop this particular high frequency signal to enter in this particular side of the substation for this here is the arrangement you can see that this is plc signal this is the substation side here line trap is actually showing high impedance for the plc signal due to that high impedance this particular part is not going to allow to enter this high frequency signal into the substation whether that same line trap is providing a low impedance path for the power energy or for the power signal it means from this line trap a power signal can be transfer but a high frequency plc signal cannot be crossed so this is the actually this is the actual diagram of a line trap situated on the grid substations then the next what is the internal structure of a line trap basically and it, it, this is a very important question many time in university examination as a part of a two marks question this question is asked that what is basically line trap is so line trap is a parallel lc circuit you can see in this diagram here this is a parallel combination of lightning capacitor arrestor a inductance or main coil and a series resistance with a tuning capacitor what is going to happen here basically this lc circuit is providing a variable impedance path for different kind of signals as says in this particular slide this same diagram is offering high impedance high impedance for power signal but sorry high impedance for uh, that particular plc signal and low impedance for the low impedance for the power signal so you can easily understand by as you know that this is a parallel lc circuit and that parallel lc circuit works on the resonant uh, frequency signal type structure and here it is a lightning arrestor which is uh, going to be used for the specific purpose of uh, uh, giving the protection to this plc unit if any kind of mishappening of lightning occurred there so then next part lmu 
LMU is basically line matching unit or line matching unit function. So, if you want to understand this in a more practical way, when we are transferring any signal from one part to the another part, then if there is not a proper impedance is applied at the receiver side, in that case as you are applying V voltage, that V voltage is going to be applied at this load side that is R L. If it properly matched with this applied voltage, then the complete voltage or complete power has been dissipated here. But if this impedance matching is not done properly, then what will happen? Some part of this incident power will reflect back and that reflected power, that reflected power with superimpose with this incident power and that will create standing waves, standing waves. These standing waves are basically going to disturb the normal functioning. So, basically in line matching unit what we are going to do in this line matching unit we are going to prevent the dangerous potential on the PLCC connection also going to match the PLCC set and transmission line impedance. Then this is the PLCC panel transmitter board block actually at the PLCC transmission side first one there is a input signal that input signal may be a voice signal or low bit data bit uh, the low data rate uh, particular control signal or RTU signal and that is going to be uh, applied through a modulator where a carrier signal which is going to provide 40 to 500 kilohertz carrier frequency. After that filtering is going to be done amplification and line matching unit to match the impedance and then the coupling device is going to add this particular PLCC block with the high tension line. Similarly, at that right receiver side here the high tension line is coming this is the high tension line one part is connected with the coupling capacitor to this amplifier part that amplifier part is getting the signal of PLCC signal then demodulation has been done after that the audio amplification point of view uh, after performing the audio amplifier and the power amplification function we are going to get the demodulated signal at the loudspeaker or the receiver side or the telephone handset some kind of arrangement is there. So, these are the basically PLCC receiver block and transmitter block. So, this is basically typical PLCC installation circuit. In this you can actually see the complete structure of the PLCC system. In this you can see that here this is the transmitting side, this is the receiving side here various kind of signal is going to be created such as facimile, printers, RTU signals, data rates, internet signals, low bit or PBX, fax and these all signals are going to be applied to this PLCC transmitter block. This transmitter block is having this whole structure inside the transmitting block or we can say that PLCC terminal. Then this signal is connected with this high tension line through this coupling capacitor scheme with the line matching unit LMU. Then 
this line matching after that line matching unit here is the line trap which is going to offer high impedance and low impedance path for the various kind of signal as I told you high impedance path for the PLCC signal and low impedance path for the high voltage signal. Then that particular combined signal of PLCC with the high voltage signal is going to be transferred through this transmission line towards the receiving side. Similarly, at the as the transmitter side at receiver side you are also having a PLCC receiver block which is having a amplifier, a demodulator, audio amplifier and power amplifier. This particular incoming signal is again passing through the same coupling capacitor and line matching unit. Here is a line trap which is actually passing the high voltage signal and blocking the PLCC signal, but that PLCC signal is coming here in the receiver, receiver uh, block of the PLCC through this coupling capacitor scheme. So, this is the complete structure or we can say that the complete installation of the PLCC. So, this is about the power line carrier communication and with this, this particular unit has been completed. Before starting the next unit, I want to give you a just a small summary of the previous uh, things. Also, before that I am uh, also want to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this PLCC signal that basically advantages of PLCC are that it is cost is less, also higher mechanical strength of power line, shortest distance between the power station and the power line have large cross sectional area resulting very low resistance per unit length and suffer less attenuation. Also, the well insulated power lines to provide the negligible leakage and as far as large spacing between the conductor to reduce the capacitance. So, smaller attenuation at higher frequency and it could also reduce the crosstalk between the. But there are some disadvantages also of the PLCC signal and that disadvantages are actually proper care has to be taken to guard carrier equipment and person using them against high voltage and current on the power lines as both high tension line and uh, signal uh, PLCC signal are using the same line for the transmission. Also noise introduced by power line are far more than in case of telephone line and this is due to the noise generated by discharge across insulator and switching processes. So, these are the main advantages and disadvantages of a power line carrier communication system. So, till now in this particular unit we understand about the definition, definition of telemetry that telemetry means remote location we are accessing some, time, uh, some kind of data from the remote location that is known as telemetry systems. Then the classification, classification has been done on the various basis in which the type of signal as analog and digital telemetry or the most common type of classification was non-electrical and electrical telemetry, electrical telemetry. In these both kind of we understand various kind of uh, telemetry scheme such as voltage and current telemetry system. Also we understand about pulse and frequency telemetry system and then we understand about the hydraulic pneumatic and mechanical type of non-electrical telemetry systems. So, 
this is the complete unit of telemetry principle first. In the next lecture, we are going to concentrate on the second part of the multi uh, telemetry system block that is multiplexing systems or multiplex system. So, till then thank you.